to talk about some basic idle tuning techniques today. So, uh, one key factor in having a good idle is the base idle airflow. So, today I want to cover how to log and tune your base idle airflow to get a real good starting point on your idle along with tuning your VE table to get the correct air, flow, air fuel ratio so you have a good quality idle. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go in the engine and then idle. We're going to go over to airflow and down here you'll see base running airflow. So we're going to look at idle airflow. So this is what we're talking about. And we've got, I've got this set up in grams per second. And how it works is either it has two, lot, two rows, either gear or in park neutral. So there's a different amount of airflow needed when you're in gear with that extra load versus being in neutral. So that's what that's all about. And then we have individual columns for uh, engine coolant temperature. So as the engine coolant temperature changes, the amount of airflow needed changes as well. As well. Now keep in mind, we've already covered uh, volumetric efficiency tuning. So we can get our air fuel ratio correct. So VE tuning along with the open loop table and the base idle airflow are going to be the primary factors in getting the air fuel ratio correct at idle especially but today with the idle airflow so now that we know where that's at we're going to go to our scanner open up our scanner and I've got a log here that I did uh, for at idle so what I did is I started the log and then started the engine and let it warm up and log the idle airflow along with several other things but at this particular time the big issue that I was watching is the idle airflow so we've got the desired idle airflow here and we can compare that to the idle airflow settings in our tune and we can make them match and that'll get you a real good start on a quality idle with an aggressive cam or whatever it's this base idle airflow is going to be a big factor so if we go into our graph layout what I'm doing is I'm I'm using the parameter idle desired airflow and then I'm taking my column axis axis and I'm going to copy and paste that from my tune and use those same numbers so my column numbers match up with the tune numbers so that's it's a real simple setup to get this set up and then what we do I'm just going to go ahead and play this so the engine starts up and it starts logging the desired idle airflow and as it's going it's going to record that and it, you can see it moves over as the temperature increases into the 90 range I'm actually only 80 but it's closer to 90 so that it moves up and it'll do that every temperature change and it'll log the desire, desired idle airflow in grams per second so it's just run and it's going to warm up we're up to 90 degrees it's still in that 90 degree column I can see my air fuel ratio, my timing spark advance, the map I'm at. I can go over, you know, I'm logging on the VE table at the same time. So I can see what's going on there. But right now we're focused on this idle airflow. So now it's bumped up to 111. And it's, gonna, it's logging that information. Now keep in mind this is in neutral and what I typically see is you know I'll let it warm up and run in neutral or park get all the way up to temp and then use those numbers to to put in my park neutral column so I'm going to pause that and go back to the tune and then when I get that park neutral column set up and then I'll just kind of 
estimate and, and smooth out the numbers to the ranges farther down into the, uh, the higher temperatures that I didn't reach just to kind of put them in there even if it's in areas you'll never actually get to like negative 40 degrees or 284 degrees and then uh, when I get that I like to, a starting point is I go ahead and add 2 grams per second to every number and put that in the gear column that gives me a good starting point just from experience that that's where I'm going to need to be at in gear and then I can drive the car like that see how it reacts and what it may or may not need like during startup it might need additional startup airflow or friction airflow otherwise I drive that and see how it goes and kind of base a lot on that to figure out the difference between the park neutral and the gear amounts of airflow needed and then another time when the engine's cold because you want to start this from a cold start I can do the same thing and just immediately as soon as I start it put it in gear and hold the brake and let it warm up like that and record those numbers and you'll see they'll be pretty close to two grams per second above what your park neutral was but it may need a little more a little less and you can go ahead and do that and fine tune and it'll drive even better and then from there you may have throttle follower or throttle cracker adjustments and like I say friction airflow and startup airflow those kind of things or if your air fuel ratio is off you might revisit your volumetric efficiency table at the same time or your open loop table maybe as it's the colder temperatures it's lean or rich whereas when it warms up it's right on so you can kind of do that in your open loop table you can fine tune that for different temperatures but uh, that'll get you a good start on an idle with a cam so you can drive around and kind of from there you can start fine tuning it and we'll cover you know specific issues another time but today I just wanted to get the base idle airflow covered so that you can have a good starting point for your quality of idle